So, well, let's. What's uh, your name, bro? Jamie. Jamie. Bob. You know that's not my real name. Yeah, yeah. Um, Wait, really? You said you've been saying that when uh, Muslims call you cartoon character, you say, "Oh, that's my name, Bob." You know, yeah, that's that, that's what I that's what I say. Call me Bob. But, um, <laughs> anyway, so so just just describe yourself. What where are you coming from in all of these? Because you wanted to ask me some questions. I want right. to ask you some questions. I don't have a certain position yet because I'm still trying to um, research and gather information around here. And you sound far less certain off camera than on. Oh, it's far less certain on camera than off camera. That's not what you said to me off camera over there. Well, I'm trying to uh, obviously, um, you know, protect um, or cover up certain things. You know, I'm not quite comfortable with being. Fully, um, you understand it'll, it'll come yeah, yeah. out it will, in the course of this conversation. But I just would like to ask you, I mean, can you like explain how you became a Christian again? Because it's very fascinating. So, so I, I became a Christian because a Muslim tried to convert me to Islam. But before that you were just an atheist. I was just a, a materialist, a materialist. In, the, in that I followed the, the general kind of consumerist culture of the West. So agnostic? No, no I didn't, these questions didn't even come to mind. Like they weren't questions that I asked myself. But you were aware that you lived in a country that was historically Christian? Uh, no, not really. That was not a conscious reality. Um, but what happened was a, a Muslim assumed that I was Christian because I was white. Right? And then started to try to convert me to Islam by using the general run of arguments that they use continuously here at Speaker's Corner. The Bible is being changed, the Bible is unreliable, Jesus never claimed to be God, the Trinity doesn't make sense, etc, etc, etc. And um, as I explored those issues and I looked into them, I realised that his criticisms of the Christian faith were... JC, just it's for sound, are we alright with the guy on the other side? Yeah. Okay. Right. So, in terms of in terms of our um, the faith, I, I started to look into it. I realised that everything that he was telling me was either a partial lie or an outright lie. So he often delivered some truth mixed in with a whole lot of spin. But when I looked into it, I realised well where the spin was and where the facts were. Um, and that propelled me down a path of further investigation, looking into Islam. Um, and looking into the Christian faith and I became a Christian in that sort of process. So for your own research where you wanted to um, know more about Islam, I take it? At yeah. start? I spoke with the Muslims. I got took to a mosque. And okay. naturally, because Islam has connections to Christianity, you explore Christianity. And um, Islam and Christianity don't have connections. Well, they, the Muslims claim that Jesus was a prophet. So they they, 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 try to they, take claim, some they claim some guy called Isa was a prophet. Right. But Isa is not, uh, uh, as a name, it doesn't correspond to Yeshua. And also, in terms of a person, historically, there's no correlation between the Isa of the Quran and the historical Jesus that, that history testifies sure to. Sure the Quran Christian they belief. mention um, uh, the Virgin Mary, or, um, that's who, the Virgin who the, the Virgin Mary, and again the Virgin Mary um, I know they do, in the Quran they do mix is not the Virgin with, Mary of the New Testament. They do mix it up with the Moses um, sister. I they, 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 there's all kinds of historical fallacies because what happened, I, I believe strongly, that what happened was in an age and a time when um, people receive their education orally, verbally, yep. in, in conversation, Muhammad was a traveler and a trader for his first wife, Khadija. He looked after her business interests. He traveled around Syria and other places. Yep. He would have met Christians and Jews. He lived with Christ uh, Jews in Medina. And in that process, he assimilated ideas and concepts um, into his own worldview that he didn't fully understand and then we find these in the Quran. Uh, so he's, we've got stories that have been mixed up and twisted based upon Muhammad's misunderstanding of them, rather than anything factual, which is why I say that there's no correlation between the two. It's you say that, um, because I'd say Christianity and uh, Judaism could also be seen as mixing up different ideas into something that's new. Well, in, in, terms, of, in terms of the Christian faith, the, what, what ideas do you think we're mixing up? Well, the Christian faith's foundation is on Judaism. Correct. Right. So, and then I believe that the idea of Jesus, I, I, I view the Old and New Testament as allegory rather than literal. I mean, no doubt. 
there are some real events that happen at these things. Yeah. But I think um, for our, all these great epics, whether it's um, the Trojan Wars or the Three Kingdoms period, or yeah. all these other really powerful stories that we've had in the like, you know, beginning and where it's about. You're going to have to speak up for the camera. So so wait, wait, no, 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 I just want to make sure you speak up. Project your voice. So as I was saying, um, let's take Judaism. I see that as a mix of Egyptian um, theology as well as um, Zoroastrianism and some of the pagan elements of the Canaanites. Um, yeah, it's, um, it seems makes more sense that the Jewish theology is based on, basically it's almost like a manifest, manifesto on um, racial superiority in terms of erasing one race of people because the Jewish race is the most important race. Right, so in terms of, in terms of the, 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 the Christian faith, I'm guessing you're an atheist. I would call myself a philo um, philosophical pagan. So a philosophical pagan. Yes, it's. Um, do, 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 let, 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 I mean, because I, I, I'll, I'll address your point in the sense that if you obviously don't believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. and you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God, then the idea you, you will obviously have to look for another explanation yep. as to where the origin of those ideas come from. They come from multiple gods that, yeah. that follow well, that's, that trend. That, that's, that's what you're saying. Yeah. But 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 I, I would just like to ask you, in terms of, because because you, you asked me a bunch of questions over there that I'm I'm yet to wait for you to elicit here. Yeah. Um, um, and I'm, are you going to ask me the same questions the, over there? Your ideal Christian state. Yeah, we will yeah, we, like come to, to that because that's yeah. why we ended up on camera just now. But in terms of the, the we're just in, in terms of the we're Christian just faith, just establishing our in, background. In, in terms of the Christian faith. Christians believe that, that, that God has revealed himself through history, but that revelation through history is not something that is independent to anthropomorphic, uh, anthropological processes. So anthropological processes are fundamental to the revelatory experience. So God reveals himself through the works of men, by the works of men, to men. Right. Yeah. So when when you've got the stories of the Exodus, which is the chief story of the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Or the Old Testament. Yeah. The, the chief story of the Scripture isn't about racial supremacy. The chief story of of the Judaism that the, their faith is based around mm -hmm. is the idea that God has chosen a people and delivered them from Egypt. And the, 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 preempt, the, the primary narrative... They were chosen before Yeah, all the way Egypt. through the prophets, they keep going back, when I, pulled you out, when I pulled you out of Egypt, when I brought you out of Egypt, and they're invited to continuously remember the fact that God has saved them. Yeah? All the prophets that came later we're all prophets of the Mosaic Covenant, and the Mosaic experience was God delivering his people from Israel. Sorry, from Egypt. Yeah. Okay? So it isn't about racial supremacy and about one group wiping out another group, though there are examples of that in the Old Testament. But that is in the supreme narrative of the Old Testament. The supreme narrative is God electing a people and delivering them and, and establishing covenants with them. So that happens with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Through Jacob, he establishes Israel. Then he delivers Israel through Moses. And then the prophets continuously call the people of Israel back to the covenant of Moses whilst pointing forward to a coming Messiah. Right. And we, get, we come to the New Testament now where instead of the temple, um, Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice that redeems them. Yeah, he's the Lamb of God that uh, redeems the, the And world. now it's no longer secured to just one group or tribe of people. Yeah, and it's now opened up. Yeah. So what happens is that, that, that from that people Israel who are the, the vine tree, God now grafts in other vines onto this vine so that they become part of Israel. So God is still redeeming Israel, God is still saving Israel, but he's bringing the Gentiles into this covenant. He's now expanded it into a new covenant that includes the Gentiles, which is you and me. Yes. Yeah? Now, as a... As a it does feel like there's a hierarchy going on where Jews are inherently going to be more favoured or more important. No, say. it actually says exactly the opposite. It, really? says, it says that now in Christ there's neither Greek nor Jew. 
Okay. So it's exactly the opposite of, of what you just said. The Christian faith um, teaches a radical equality between all of humanity that is not defined by race or class or gender or other attributes because we're all made in the image of God but then it also creates it also has this understanding of a family so whilst I owe you certain things because you're made in the image of God I owe my family the church something more because they are my family I owe them something that is above what I owe to you. I owe them a, 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 a discreet kind of loyalty, a discreet kind of uh, solidarity so with church, them. The church family is more important than your biological family. The, yes, the church family becomes more important than your biological family. It's interesting. All right. So let's if 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 your biological family uh, is not Christian. All right. Okay, but then again, I wouldn't say all Christians are the same. Would you, what would you say? Well, it depends what you mean, because the, 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 the vision of the, the, the Christian eschatology culminates in, in what we see as happening in heaven. Like, we see that uh, many nations from many races and tribes come together in the worship of the one true God. So do Protestants expect Catholics to be in the same heaven as they are? I am not going to speak for Protestants, let them speak for themselves. I'm stood in front of you and I'll give you my opinion. Okay. And my opinion is that the church are, is that collection of disciples that seek to follow Christ in their everyday life. Mm -hmm. And that those disciples can be found in all the great churches, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, in churches in Africa, churches in Europe, churches in Asia. Mm -hmm. But with Catholics, their, um, their theology is based on a, a representative of another. Again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to speak for Catholics, I'm going to speak for myself. Right. The, the Christian church of those disciples seeking to follow Jesus. Yes, but I feel that the Catholics are having... Say again? I feel that Catholics in their theology um, are worshipping more things than just Jesus. Well, I mean, the, 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 if you actually go and speak to Catholics, they will make I a distinction. I grew up in Catholic, by the way. That means absolutely nothing. The, 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 those that, those there that is worship that you give to someone of a lesser degree. And the reason for that is if you actually look into the, uh, the, the meaning of the word worship, it comes from a Middle English Anglo-Saxon, we are skipe, which means to give due honor. So you, every time you bow to the queen, you're giving her due honor. If I address you as mister, that's giving you due honor. If I, um, you know, stand for the judge as he enters the courtroom, I'm giving him due honour. Mayors in England, um, ha one of their official titles is the, his worship or her worship. So when the Pope, Judges uh, when the Pope be um, bows to the statue of the Virgin Mary, yeah. that's not worship. That is not divine worship, that is not latria, that is due only to God. The, the Catholics would say this is dubia, which is appropriate veneration to to Mary, appropriate honouring of Mary, who is the mother of God. So when Catholics say, we must never go to our Lord Jesus Christ except only through Mary. Those kinds of, um, those kinds of statements are not dogmatic of the Catholic Church. They are statements by certain spiritual groups within the Catholic Church and don't represent full understanding of Catholic dogma. I think it's uh, interesting when you look at history. But why do you focus on the Catholic Church so much? Um, you know, because the Catholic Church, I think, is a bit irredeemable right now. According to who? And um, to what standards? I watch your videos, man. Very encouraging. I'm a born-again Christian, man. Thanks, people. There's so much more context in the Bible than... What type of Christian? Yeah. I'm a born-again Christian, that's why I am. I believe in the Gospel. Every Christian is a born-again Christian. That's correct. But you know, brother, when, when someone asks you that kind of question, yeah, do, the, the reason why they're asking you that kind of question is because they, they want you to affirm the narrative that Christians are divided. Mm -hmm. They wanted you to split the church into denominations. There's only one kind of Christian, and that is someone who is a disciple of Christ. Amen. Haven't we always been divided? We? You're not part of we. The Christians. You're not part of we. Well, European history shows. No, 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 no. The Europeans don't have a unique claim to the Christian church. 
but they are Christian. Many Christians are Europeans, yeah. but it isn't the case that all Europeans are Christians. You have no claim to Christian heritage unless you're a Christian. An Ethiopian Catholic. Does it mean some. nothing? Does it mean nothing? You don't have any claim at all to the Christian heritage on the basis of your ethnicity. I'm not saying on ethnicity, I'm That's saying exactly what I'm saying. as a European. No, I'm saying Europeans have their own unique brand of Christianity. I am saying that they're, they're, the, the, the Christian faith is not unique to Europe. Okay. An Ethiopian Christian or a Latino Christian has all the claim, has more claim to St. Paul's in London the, the, the Cathedral of St. Paul's and more claim to the Vatican and more claim to Mount Athos than you do. That's all fair dues. Because you have rejected your European history, you've rejected your European heritage and you've rejected the thing that made Europe Europe because you rejected the church. All right, so we'll, we'll probably not um, agree on that point. Well, well, well let, let, are, you, are, you, are you a disciple of Christ? No, I am a pagan. Okay, you're a pagan. Now let's look at the European history for the last thousand years. Like, would you say that it has been formed in terms of Christianity? Um, certainly later on, but the Christian foundations were on something else. They were, they were certainly built on something else. That, that's absolutely true. But those things were transformed. I mean, what makes a culture a culture? It's the things that, it's the way it organises its values. It's the way it's organising its priorities. It's its understanding of justice. But the, 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 the way that pagan Rome understood and the way that pagan Germans understood the order of values is different to how the church discipled European civilization. And when you reject the Christian faith, you're rejecting European civilization. No, I acknowledge the Christian faith and I accept it part of my heritage. But doesn't it's not part of your heritage though. You've rejected it. No, as a European, it was a time where Europe, and to this day, Europeans are still and mostly Christian. Do, do, you, do you want Europeans to be proud of their history? Of course. So you want Europeans to be proud of their Christian identity? I want them to be proud of all their identities. What, 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 identity, what identities are we pointing to that is not rooted now or transformed by Christianity? I think there's a big uh, surge in paganism. There is a resurgence in a new form of paganism yeah. that has no historical connection to the paganism of the past. The pagans of the past used to have human sacrifices. Do you agree with human sacrifice? Mm, no. Nope. Why don't you agree with human sacrifice? Because when they were doing it, it was out of a un not understanding how nature works. No, the reason why you don't agree with human sacrifice is because Christianity has informed European culture that human sacrifice is evil. That's actually why you don't agree with human sacrifice. Even though sacrifice. they descended from the Jews, which um, when they did practice both human and animal sacrificing. They believed in animal sacrifice, not human sacrifice. Give me an example of human sacrifice in temple worship. Uh, well, remember before um, Abraham, you know, was about to um, yeah. kill his son. Did so, he kill his son? No, but it, what happened? Who did he kill? All right. The official story says he um, the only story. It with a goat. The only story. There are other alternatives saying he actually killed his son, but let's not get into that. Um, yeah, he um, changed the rules so that oh, right, it'll be a goat that will um, be the scapegoat. So it was a, it, exactly. So it was an animal sacrifice, but not why, a human. But why was that Sorry, suggested? Just out of curiosity, why did you said that he killed somebody else or something else, not an animal. But you said that you read that, but you're not going to get into yeah, it. Yeah, where, just where, as a Christian, where, where, anyway. Listen, why did you read that? Why I, did you read that? I, I just like the like. If you have a if yeah, you yeah, have yeah. a book that I can go back to some historical. Well, sorry, uh, 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 I, I just like um, heard this for. Um, can I just say that there is a danger, which I think is very prevalent in our culture, that people who want to um, answer these fundamental questions seek to do so in in a way that isn't holistic, that isn't using the full collectiveness of our Christian heritage. And when they do that, they have to replace the missing parts of the picture with any information that they can get hold of. And, and, and the reality of that is that that leads people like yourself to grasp at straws to put together a bigger picture. Yeah, I'm always trying to see the truth. Yeah, but, but I would say that you're, you're trying to find a way of avoiding the truth because you will find any information you can that means you don't have to become a Christian. 
No, I am very open-minded. So, so we'll go back to we'll go back to the identity, uh, uh, a European identity. You don't believe in human sacrifice because Christianity has taught you and has taught European civilization that human sacrifice is wrong. No, it's more from a scientific level because when you look at the ancestors' point of view, they thought if they didn't sacrifice, then the seasons or the harvest would come. And right. We now know from science that let, no, they can't. Well, let, 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 let's look at that again because now you've testified to the influence of Christianity. The, the rise of modern science mm -hmm. in Western Europe is intrinsically linked to a Christian worldview. The natural philosophers explored the scientific world on the premise that because man was rational and was made in the image of God, God was rational and had created a rational universe that we could inquire into through rational inquiry. And that by doing so, we could learn the mind of God and draw closer to God. So they saw it as a mystical exercise in drawing closer to God to investigate the natural world. So the rise of science grew out of a Christian narrative. I would say, so I, I say it grew whether, out despite Christianity. So whether, where, where, where's your evidence of that? Well, you remember the guy who um, discovered that we circle around the sun. Copernicus yes, was he, a Christian. Yes, but the Catholics um, didn't want him, you know, telling that we're not actually the center of the world according to the Bible. So what the, else but the, get wrong, Hold on, know? hold on. Copernicus and Galileo Galilei. Galilei. Galileo I no, Copernicus oh, yeah, came first, yeah, yeah. then Galileo Galilei came second. They were both practicing Christians. They both died as Christians. By Christians. No, actually they weren't executed. Was, they was, Where's your evidence? They're threatening, where, the authority, they were where, threatening the authority of the church. Where was your evidence that they were executed by the church? Um, because the church um, said that if you're going to tell people that we're not actually the centre Where was your evidence that they were executed by the church? Don't do the Dawah team trick of not answering the question. Where is your evidence that they were executed by the church? Oh, it's just so self um, explanatory. Self explanatory. So now we can just make assertions based upon nothing but opinion and speculation. Um, it's one of those things where it's like, um, did the, um, what do you call it, um, um, the Inquisition exist? And we could always you, you're we jumping, talk about the you're details jumping of around, certain, you're jumping certain, around. Exactly, but because yeah. the point is, bro, you don't want to acknowledge the fact that Christianity emerged from a Christian worldview. And you have the couple of these sound bites that you've picked up from the Enlightenment philosophers and the Enlightenment narrative, and you are using them to try and justify an unjustifiable position. I would say most of the science was recycled from the ancient Greeks who weren't Christians. That was that that there is definitely the influence of Greek philosophy in terms of scientific inquiry, particularly the use of mathematics. However, also the idea of God. However. However, when you look at Copernicus, Galileo Galilei, Sir Francis Bacon, and numerous other scientists, that the, there was an explosion of scientific inquiry due to advancements in technology, which the church was not opposing, that they allowed man to inquire, and the church allowed human beings to inquire into the natural world. Didn't Christians uh, burn down second, to Alexandria? One Library. second. No, that was Muslims. Lastly, but no, that was Muslims. Also... No, again, you've just you're just clutching at straws, bro. No, what it's happened the, it's to the, this? It's the official story. What happened to make history it's the great official again? Story. It isn't the official story. All oh, right. You're you're just clutching at straws because they made a whole film about this. You, so you're, you're saying that whole film was based yes, on Yes, it's a total okay. lie. And if you're basing your history on films, you're not taking your cap. No, I watch the seriously. films and then I research, and it turns out right. It so, has so that. where's the evidence that Christians burnt down the Library of Alexandria? Oh, it's all written down. Where? Just look on Wikipedia. By who? Oh, gosh. Okay. You're clutching at straws, bro. Fine. And you're clutching at straws like all of these fanciful... People can do their own research. I'm yeah, not, they can. I'm, I don't need to bring out like They can. No, that's fine. That's fine. People can do their own research. You'll find that Muslims burnt down um, I know the that, library but that Alexandria. was also before then it was Christians and before that it was accidentally by Julius Caesar. Christians, well. Christians owned Egypt as a part of the Christian empire. If no, we wanted to destroy, and Jews, if though. we wanted to destroy the Alexandrian library, we had hundreds of years in which we could have done it and we never did. The fact that in the because 7th century, the growing. fact in the 7th century, no, we were dominating the Roman empire from pagans. the 5th century. We had dominated the, the, the Christian empire from Justinian that was a hundred years 
after Constantine. Mm -hmm. You don't know history. Listen to your cap. Make history great again. Yeah, stop clutching at straws to put together some anti-Christian narrative to justify the fact that you can have an identity. I, I wasn't bringing up an anti-Christian narrative. I was just um, telling you. You're, you're, you're trying. Myself. You're trying to like, like, like. I mean, you are someone. I'm trying to be very non-biased here. Right? I'm not trying to like have a go at Christians or have a go at any specific group. If I, um, you're trying to deny the Christian heritage of Europe. I did not say that. You're trying to say that there are identities that are not Christian. Saying that in Europe. the Europeans and Christ the Christian Europeans had a unique identity to other to what? Christians. To African Christians? Yep. Yeah. Do you, do you see that African Christians shouldn't come to Europe? Um, no. I mean, um, do you think that African Christians? I I'm in favour of Christians from around the world coming to Europe, diluting our ethnicity. Uh, and getting rid of our whiteness. So, I've got no problem with so it at all. Really so I'm not saying that I, I'm not saying that we should have it as an agenda that, that we should actively pursue it, but I'm saying I've got no problem with it if it happens. Right, let's Do just, you have a problem with it? Well, let's just see, say this this did this, 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 this happen in the future. Who's going to play any of the historical Brits in the do you, no, do, you, do you have a problem with the idea of Christians from around the world settling in Europe and changing the genetic code of the European? Very much. You have a problem with it. Yeah. So you are an ethno-pagan nationalist. Um, um, along those lines, yeah. Yes. So you're an ethno-pagan nationalist. Right. So because in paganism, terms, you cannot separate from the race or right. the culture. Right. Uh, well, uh, actually, once again, once again, you are. There's no. Um, you, you're taking a 20th century, like you're not a good student of history. You're taking a 20th century perspective, right? You're taking a 20th century perspective and applying it to the past, and you're not looking at history for what it is. The Europeans had no sense of being European. Right. Okay. Ethnic so, tribes. Odin had tribes didn't also manifest themselves into sort of other. No. Right. No, these were separate religions. They all seemed very similar. They were separate. Shows how the religions. Roman Empire managed to conquer and these And they were also separated they by centuries. Se they could all like um, trade the same gods. Or... They were separated by centuries. Roman paganism so was, was very separated. In fact, there's more peace during the Roman Empire than there was in Christian Europe. In terms of in terms of in terms of Christian Europe, in terms of Christian identity, all of these ancient pagan identities were converted. Their history has been lost. We have no connection to those druids of old. No, we have it through Christianity. We have no connection to those have, druids. I think of old. we have a lot of paganism in Christianity. We, we can... give examples. Uh, well. what, what what firstly define what do you mean by paganism? Paganism is something that is um, that can like correspond with every sort of nation and race, but they have their own unique flavour. And you know, it's um, in Nordic paganism is different to say African paganism, Middle Eastern paganism. You're, you're defining paganism according to an ethnicity. That is not an accurate In the history of its people. That, that is not an accurate. That is not paganism. You're talking about ethno-nationalism and you're relabeling it paganism. No, I'm saying like Shinto is a culture that is obviously for the Japanese. Right. So, so that's not paganism. Let's be clear. You you aren't qualifying your terms. That's why I say that a philosophical pagan. So I'll give you I'll give you an academic understanding of paganism. Paganism is the belief that the natural world has supernatural qualities that we can interact with supernaturally. Okay. Okay? Depends through things it. like human Depends sacrifice, through worshipping holy trees, through contacting dead well, sacrifice spirits. Sacrifice is a big thing, but doesn't mean yeah. having, doesn't mean human sacrifice. It means sacrifice in general. No, well, I'm sorry, but you, you're clearly you not. You see these things in allegory. You're, 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 uh, you're not. Point, you know. You're not an authority on paganism. Like you're not an authority on European history. Yeah, that's why I love paganism. Okay. Everyone can have their own unique brand. This is not paganism. You're, you're talking you about your, paganism is the same. You're relabeling paganism because you don't want to call yourself an ethno-nationalist. No, I want to discover the truth, man. 
right. and understand. So in terms know. of in terms, but, but but the point is, when you're confronted with facts, all you do is assert your opinion. No, these are your facts that you match your own opinion to. to sound right. Like facts. So well, I mean, everyone is invited to look at what the definition of paganism is and to see if it's something to do with ethnicity or a supernatural belief that the natural world has supernatural qualities. And you can look to yourself which one of us yeah, is giving a more accurate definition. Point of view, you know, what I'm saying to you though is, what I'm saying to you is, like, you have a problem with African Christians coming to Europe. No, I didn't have a problem. I'm saying if you want them to should completely change the racial makeup. Of I've got no I problem with that if it happens. I, I do. So right, why? Is, why is it wrong? Because, like I said, imagine if we did become some um, caramel looking people. What's wrong with that? Well, we look brilliant. Well, then we no longer... We look good now looking. We, now, now we no longer look like our ancestors. So? Women, so, so you don't like redheads, you don't want blondes, you don't want blue eyes. No, no, no. That, that's on. all like you firstly, know, nothing firstly, more firm cherishing. Let's, let's be clear. Let, let the red squirrels die. You know. Yeah. Let, let, let's be clear. Let's be clear. I have. I, I've, I. I'm not saying that we need to actively pursue this as some kind of agenda point. But what I am saying is, if it happens by accident, I have no problem with it. Okay. What I do have a problem with is the idea that we can enclave parts of the world as being in in quote marks white and other parts of the world in quote marks black and in other parts of the world quote marks caramel i have a problem with that idea of understanding the world so when, Christian, the reason, so when white christians say that powerful like ethno nationalist um, causes are those christians in your opinion i would say that politically they are not following christ they're, fo they're borrowing the political narratives of others because they haven't thought to themselves, what does a Christian political narrative look like? A Christian political narrative is internationalist. It is multi-ethnic. It is global. It is about the idea of the triumph of the church over all of her enemies. It is about the idea of the supremacy of Christ, of making Christ king in your own heart as an individual, in your fellowship, in your society, and in your country. It is the idea that Christians all worship God together from many tribes and tongues, the worshipping the one true God. That is a global agenda, which means that Christians have to control territory to do that. But it doesn't mean that we control those territories to preserve a certain ethnicity. Isn't it ironic that there are so many Christians who are right-wingers who do want to establish um, enclaves or separate societies? I have been called, I, I would say, like, take for example, there's a, a, a woman you probably are familiar with, Faith mm -hmm. Goldie. Yep. Yeah, you know Faith Goldie? Of She's someone who uh, very much is, is pro-Christian and also pro a, a narrative of white empowerment. Mm -hmm. So she's bought into the, the racial narratives that are a reaction to the liberal progressive black nar black identity movements or the, the idea of the progressive sort of we've got to find a persecuted minority that we can help and then we define them by this ethnicity and then seek to help them and elevate them. And it's a reaction to that. My point is that that is not a Christian way of thinking about the questions. A Christian way of thinking about the questions takes no factor about ethnicity into the dialogue. Like, it isn't about the colour of your skin, but about the content of your character. That's Martin Luther King, a, someone who taught and fought for equality on a Christian narrative without making it about being black. Who also was very anti-Jewish. You can, you, I'm not going to get into whether he was anti-Jewish or not. My point to you is, and I'm, I'm not convinced that he is based upon every other error you've said about history so far, but my, my point to you is that, that your way of thinking about the world, are you honestly trying to say that there is something qualitative that is special about the fact that my skin has a pigmentation? I think it's more about skin colour. It's to do with because it's the reason why you have that pigmentation because you, um, your ancestors have lived in the Northern Hemisphere. But are you saying that there's something that I need to protect about my pigmentation? Um, I believe all animals, all ethnicities have a right to exist. And so, that, so you're saying yes, you're saying I should protect my pigmentation? So, yeah. Right, so what's special about being this pinkish colour? I just think it's great that we have all such I'm a also, unique people. I, I have know. got no problems with being white, by the way. I'm not embarrassed about being white. Right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not ashamed of my white skin. Mm -hmm. 
But at the same time, I'm not saying that there's something special about it that needs to be preserved. Right, that's your opinion. But and considering I'll, 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 global warming, I probably need a bit I'll, more men. Others see their <laughs> race as their extended family. You what? Others receive their ethnicity or race as their extended family. And, and I would say this is why it is important that a muscular faith arises. Because if a muscular Christian faith does not arise, we will see more people buy into these un-European or alt-right extreme uh, white narratives of ethnicity that, that ultimately will be the destruction of us all. Right. Like, you're pushing your, people like you push Europe over a cliff. Because what you're... Well, what about IC3, then? What about him? Who? IC3. IC3? Yeah. I don't really know enough about IC3's position to oh, talk he's about. he's for it. nationalism for all races, you know. Right, well, I'm, I'm against all ethno-nationalism, whether it comes from a black man or a white man. Okay. I, I'm against them all, because so you, they're not be, a Christian so you, so way of thinking about the So question. you'd be happy if this happened, Africa was um, completely dominated by East Asians and Europeans and um, South Americans, as long as they're Christian? What I'm saying is, I want to see the triumph of the church. That's what I'm working towards. So you towards. want Africa, if it happens, I want to Africa to be Christian. Mixed. Completely, I want, and that might mean I want, completely mixed. I mean, to answer your question directly, I want Saudi Arabia to be Christian. Right. I want the Middle East to be Christian. I want Southeast Asia to be Christian. I want Africa to be Christian. I want Europe to be Christian. I want every pagan to be Christian. I want every white nationalist to be a Christian. He's an absolutist. Yep, I am an absolutist. I want the triumph of the church. Today is Palm Sunday. Today is the day we celebrate Christ as king. And if we are saying Christ is king, then he has to be king of everything, not just something. Well, as is a European pagan, I will celebrate Easter in the pagan festival. You know? Right, so so this, so this, let's just talk about this, this pagan Easter festival. I don't really want to talk about this. I want to understand what's your ideal Christian state. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 we, 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 we are going to talk about it. Because you're trying to claim a heritage that I'm saying you have no right to. But Those who buy into an ethno-nationalist narrative have no claim to European identity. Right. None. They've that's given your, it up. That's your opinion. The moment you say you're not a Christian, you have rejected European civilization. So do Jews um, not have a right to be ethnically Jewish or adopt the Jewish theology? The, your ethnicity is something that you're born with. Well, hold on. I'm saying that it should not define he, your he identity. Say, he's saying as a pagan, I'm not allowed to lay, lay claim over my I am pagan saying heritage, they which is ethno-centric. Yeah. I am saying Do that Jews have the right to claim. I am saying that all Jews should become Christians, and when they become <laughs> Christians, they stop <laughs> being Jews <laughs> in the kingdom of God. <laughs> but there were Jews. Well, every single Christian country in the world had Jews before it had Christians. That makes it difficult, yes. In the right. So how can you say Come that on. we don't belong in this country? But your, your comment is a historical, and sir, sad. because you couldn't speak meaningfully of a Christian country until there were Christians. But if not for the Jews, they wouldn't be Christians. The, 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 absolutely, the Christian faith Jesus it comes was a Jew. out Where would you Christians be without us Jews? Yes, that is exactly what, <laughs> what we, we believe. <laughs> Telling me something that I believe already doesn't doesn't change what I believe. It's right. kind of the Dawah Muslim well, trick. I'll they point out Christian beliefs. They point out Christian beliefs of the religion rather than the secondaries. Yeah, you know? but, but 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 here's the thing. Here's the problem with with what you're doing. I go right? back to the source. Well, yeah, let, let, let's come back to our conversation, because what I'm saying is, I, I am saying that ethno nationalists who abandon the faith have abandoned the very civilization that they are claiming to want to preserve because because European civilization cannot be separated from Christianity and Christianity Christianity is something that is multi-ethnic and therefore when you abandon Christianity you abandon all of European history for the last 1400 years and more and that means that you have no claim to European civilization. An Ethiopian has more claim to European civilization if they're a Christian than you do. So my genes make no difference. Your genes make no difference. Oh, right.